Yeshua prays, and Yeshua said, only one is returned thanks for thanks, where are the other nine? And that is the condition of Ephraim. Yahweh has healed Ephraim through the blood of Yeshua, and the nine are in the Sunday church. They don't want to come back and give Yahweh thanks for the things Yahweh has done in their life. They're, those nine are still refusing to come back to Yeshua. They don't mind lifting up Jesus, but they have a problem coming back to Yeshua and giving him praise and thanksgiving. Where are the other nine? Weren't there ten Ephraimites who were healed? Where are the other nine? So, Yahweh has showed us the things that he wants us regarding the things about the age of honey so that we don't get discouraged in drinking and consuming a diet of solamente leche. Make sense? Because let's be honest, Jerry. Jerry, let's be honest. Milk really gets tired quickly. Even if you go from cow to goats to this, that, I mean, milk, you get tired of milk. I mean, even those of us who like milk. So, Yahweh wants us to remember that there's honey. There's authority to rule and reign with Him. And But in the meantime, while we're drinking the milk, we ought to give praise, giving thanks for all things He reveals. Can we give Yahweh thanks for everything? No, I can't give Yahweh thanks for everything, even though I want to give Yahweh thanks for everything. I can't. I can only give Yahweh thanks for the things that He has revealed to me, and that He's revealed to you for that, and the things He's done for you and for others. You can give Yahweh thanks for those things, but you can't give Yahweh thanks for things that you don't understand that He hasn't revealed. I, I only thank Him when I've been cleansed. And just like that leper who came back and gave Him praise, what about the nine who knew what He had done and didn't come back at all? So. We want to be like the one who came back and give thanks for that. When Yahweh does anything in your life, we come back to Yeshua and say thank you. When He does anything in your life, we come back to Him and we say thank you. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. Thank you, Yeshua. We always come back to Yeshua to give thanks for thanks. Thanks for the things, for all things. Not all things, but all things that He has what? Revealed. Look at verse 2. If, therefore... The Son of Elohim being He who is Yahweh. So all those cults, that's what they are. Most of those folks are just a bunch of Messianic Jewish cults. They deny the deity of Yeshua. He was a rabbi. He was a good teacher. He had some good ideas. He was a man, and as a man he defeated the devil. And he showed us how we should live as a man. And blah, 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 pablum, ad, ad nauseum, ad infinitum. Well, guess what? Barnabas tells us the son of Elohim being Yahweh. Another Jewish witness from the house of Judah. Barnabas. He is not just the son of Yahweh. He is Yahweh. The son of Yahweh. He is Yahweh ben Yahweh. Not the guy that was incarcerated in jail. This guy was incarcerated in Jerusalem. Eh? Mitchell was born in Pennsylvania, wherever he came from. Yahweh ben Yahweh. Okay. This Yahweh ben Yahweh was born in Bethlehem of Yehuda, according to Micah 5.2. That's, That's it. So he is Yahweh, son of Yahweh. Yahweh ben Yahweh. The real one. Who is about to judge the living and the dead. We, you, you see that in Masesh Lechim 17.31. He suffered to the end that his stripes might make us alive to what? To honey, because that's the goal, to rule and reign with Yeshua. Because we have entered the land flowing with milk and honey. What is the land flowing with milk and honey, since we're not in the land flowing with milk and honey? The body of Yeshua, the body of Nazarene Israel. This is the land flowing with milk and with honey. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Right, Rebbe Tzim Right, Tov Tov Tov. Who is about to judge the living and the dead, he suffered to the end that his stripes may make us live. Let us believe that the Son of Elohim, verse 2, Barnabas 7, 2, let us believe that the Son of Elohim could not suffer except on our account. In other words, let's, let's think this through together. Let's take this logically. Yeshua, who was Yahweh and is Yahweh, could not suffer from the hands of his creation, mankind, unless he was suffering for their atonement 
and for the removal of their sins, nothing else can touch them. No man taketh my life from me, Yeshua said in Yohanan 10, 17. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. This commandment I have received from my Father. No man can touch me. No man can do anything to me. And Barnabas reminds us, the Kohen from the island of Cyprus, the Jewish rabbi and shepherd, that the son of Elohim could not suffer except it had been given him to suffer. Let's take that a step further. The son of Elohim could not be tempted unless Yahweh wanted him to appear to be tempted. One of the major arguments against the whole wheat unleavened bread is, well, we all know that Yeshua was tempted. And if he wasn't human, if he didn't have a human nature, how could he be tempted? Let's read that together. Ephraim 4.15. He was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Meaning he was not tempted, and in all points means S period, A period, 10, use all the same methods that he uses with us. But it says he was in all points tempted, but he did not sin. In other words, follow this through. He could not suffer and neither could he sin. The only time he could suffer when it was for our sins. The only time he could be tempted is when the Father allowed him to be tempted and he never was tempted. He was in all points tempted, but without sin. Tempted means that he didn't find sin attractive. Tempted means the avenues, the methodology, the modus operandi of Satan was identical to him. It was used on him as it was used on us. But it doesn't mean he found it attractive. Baruch Hashem, that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. Let us believe that the Son of Elohim could not suffer except for our account, on our account. How many believe that? That the Son of Elohim could not suffer except on our account. <laughs> Baruch Hashem Yahweh. I believe that. Look at verse 3. I love Barnabas. I love this. Notice. But being crucified, and I was trying to figure out this morning at breakfast in Fort Myers Beach. That's where I started my day. So I don't want to hear any excuses. You need to be here on time. Oh, that, that's another thing. Let me just let me step on your toes a little bit. Be here on time. Don't come in late. I have a, that's a pet peeve with me. Okay? I'm not talking to anybody. I'm talking to everybody. But if the shoe fits, use a shoehorn. Be on time. Show the respect to Yahweh in his house that he deserves. We all have excuses. I drive two, mile, two, two hours a day. What's your excuse? I'll just move on. I want to have a few friends left. <laughs> Barnabas 7.3 But being crucified he, Now this, I was trying to figure out in breakfast in Fort Myers this morning. And this was a tough one. I mean, this Jewish dude really stumped me right here. I, I, I struggle with this and I'm trying to say, what, what is the Father saying? And by the way, I'm not, I'm not I'm not telling you to be on time to condemn you. I want to mature you into the disciple of Yahweh that he wants. And like I told my old congregation before I scared them all away. Okay? If you had a $700 paycheck and you were not on time, you wouldn't get paid. You know what? Every one of you would be on time. All right? So you know I'm right. Being crucified, look, check this out, verse 3. Being crucified, he was given drink, he was given to drink of vinegar and gall. How then did the priests of the temple signify concerning this? Now the commandment is written this way. Try to follow. This gets complicated. Whoever will not fast on the fast of the day of fasting will die the death. What is a day of fasting? Yom Ha Kippurim. The day of atonements. Because Yahweh has commanded the fasting. The day of atonements. Since he also was about to offer the vessel, what vessel? Look at this. This is why you need the book. Because here it really comes in handy. 
since he was about to offer the vessel. What vessel did Yeshua offer? His own flesh. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. That was the vessel that he offered. His own flesh. That was the vessel to be our atonement. Our kippara. Whoever will not fast on the fast day will die the death. Yahweh. So one thing we know. That the Jewish people in the time of Yeshua were already fasting on Yom Kippur. That we already know. So in case you want to blame the rabbis for something that they're not to blame, even at the time of Yeshua, on Yom Kippur, even when the temple stood, the people of Jewish Israel were fasting. We see that from Barnabas. So that we know for a fact. That's not tradition. And Yeshua obviously approved of it because he never overturned it. Since he also was about to offer the vessel that contained his ruach, as a sacrifice. Notice, the vessel was his body. His body contained his ruach, which was his sacrifice, but he could not suffer except Yahweh ordained that he suffer for my sins and for your sins. But at no other time can this one suffer. Only when it came to suffering for your sins and also for my sins. And you know why I love Yeshua so much? And I know why you love Yeshua so much? Because we've been forgiven much. Yeshua said to who? He, the one who is forgiven much, he is the one who loves much. He's going to serve me full time with all his heart, all his mind, all his soul, and his strength. He that has been forgiven much, loves much. Whoever will not fast on the fast day, he shall die the death. Yahweh has commanded it. Since he... He also was about to offer the vessel, meaning his own flesh, that contained his ruach as a sacrifice, in order that the type might be fulfilled, which was given by the offering of Yitzchak, Isaac, at the altar on Mount Moriah. So in other words, Yeshua had to suffer on Mount Moriah because the, 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 the type had to fit the anti-type. The type is Yitzchak being slain on Mount Moriah, and the anti-type is Yeshua also being slain on Mount Moriah. Was Yitzchak slain? Probably not. But the point is, the type and the anti-type both had to fit in locale and in location. It was the same place, it was the same act, and the type had to fit the anti-type. So his body, his body contained the vessel of sacrifice, of our atonement, our kippurah, but the vessel also contained his ruach, and so his, his body and, and his ruach were the vessel of atonement. Does that make any sense? His body and his ruach were the <laughs> vessel of atonement. To that about Yahweh. Look at verse 4. Barnabas 7 4. Part 4 or 5, I forgot what this is. I believe it's 5 or 4. I lost track. It's, it's a long bridge, and this bridge won't collapse. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Like the one in Minnesota. <laughs> Poor folks. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Only five people were killed on that bridge. That's a miracle. In case you didn't believe in miracles before. <laughs> That's a miracle. To Darabah Yahweh. Look at verse 4. What said he in the book of the prophet? Let them eat, now this is interesting, let them eat of the goat which is offered on the fast for the sins of all. Attend diligently to this. Let the priests alone eat of the unwashed intestines with vinegar. Okay, let's flash back. On Yom Kippur, how many goats were there in the ritual of Yom Kippur? Pardon me while I wipe. Mm. Handy wipe. Baruch Hashem No Windex involved. Wipe. In the kingdom there won't be any glasses. How many believe that? There won't be any glasses in the kingdom. Amen. Or contact lenses. Mm hmm? What's that? Fake teeth. Fake teeth? That's what you're saying. 
How do you know? Did my wife let you in on my secret? Now look at verse 4. What said he in the book of the prophet? Let them eat of the goat which is offered on the fast for the sins of all. Attend diligently to this and let the priests alone eat of the unwashed intestines. Now, now there were two goats in Baikra 16 on the Day of Atonement. One, the Kohen laid his hand on the goat and then sent the goat into the wilderness via a fit man and that goat was called the scapegoat or the Azazel. And I've had a lot of people ask me, was the Azazel or the scapegoat, was it symbolic of the devil or was it symbolic of Yeshua who was carrying away the sins out of the camp? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Both. It was Azazel in terms of the iniquity and the evil being removed from the camp, but it was Yeshua who bore our evil and bore our sin and bore our iniquity. So the answer is yes, it was both the evil and the righteous one carrying the evil. So stop confusing yourself. Whatever you do, stop poking yourself in the eye, please. That's one of my frequently asked questions. Rabbi, your teachings are so straight and so forward, but this thing about the Azazel, I'm, not, I'm confused. Was the scapegoat Satan or was it Yeshua? Yes. <laughs> to that Rabbi Yahweh. But I, I, this, is, this is some heavy stuff. Now the other goat was for Yahweh. The other goat was sacrificed. Now here is the truth. That I, I, never, I knew what I didn't know, but I didn't comprehend that I didn't know, but I kind of knew and I should have known, but it didn't hit me until I really knew. And then I had to know what Barnabas was knowing, so that now he knows that I know, that you know, that he knows, that she knows. Eos, Eos, conozco. Everybody knows. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Those dudes didn't fast. Uh -huh. On Yom Kippur, the Kohanim ate the goat for Yahweh. That's what Barnabas says. We were fasting, the nation was fasting, and they were having lunch. Oh no. You have to read that again. It's just like me. Now I can relate to it, man. I can understand that. Notice. I love it. I can understand. Everybody talks about a Shabbat. I haven't had a Shabbat in 20 years. I do more work on Shabbat than I do on any other day because I'm a Kohen. I'm not a plumber and I'm not a locksmith. Nothing wrong with those professions, it's just not who I am. So these, while the nation of Israel was fasting, on Yom HaKippurim, the Kohen HaGadol laid his hands on one goat, became Azazel, <laughs> away from the camp. The other goat, not only the Kohen HaGadol had lunch, it was for Yahweh, it was an ascension offering. But the other Kohanim joined him and they ate. Oy. 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 Oy, Baba. Padre Celestia. Ready for this delicacy, Madeline? I am lower the temperature for this. <laughs> you ready for this delicacy? Unwashed intestines yeah. with a touch of vinegar. Dye. 